Thank you very much for the introduction and the nice segue because we're going to take a short break away from the really exciting cutting edge science, uh, but talk about something that's also important, especially to the health of physics as a discipline. Um, um, so again, as introduced, my name is Matt Beekman. I'm in the Department of Physics at Cal Poly State University in San Luis Obispo, which is just a little bit north of here. Um, just really quick survey from show of hands. How many folks in the audience majored in physics in college? Okay, so I'm gonna be sloppy with fractions also and say that's about half. Um, so uh, of those folks that majored in uh, physics in college, how many experienced the situation where you, you know, somebody asks you what your major is and then you replied and said, I'm majoring in physics and they kind of look at you and they'd say, oh, physics, huh? That sounds hard. Uh, so what can you do with a physics degree? How many people experienced that question? Okay, again, maybe about half. Um, so this, you know, my, the, the topic of my talk is sort of to help, uh, you know, spread some information and even maybe uh, some, dispel some disinformation about what you can do and can't do with a physics degree. Um, and so getting to the goals, my goals are uh, first just to give a, a big picture overview of which job sectors physics graduates uh, often work in. Uh, then I'll uh, uh, show a few specific examples of, of successful physics career profiles, and then um, end with, by, uh, and along the way, providing some resources for further exploration, and even some things that you might want to consider maybe doing in your classroom. So there's uh, some nice, a lot of nice resources out there. Uh, and uh, about a year and a half ago, I became uh, involved in uh, a program through the American Physical Society, which is the Career Mentoring Fellows Program, and so a lot of the information that I've uh, learned over the last year and a half, I've tried to incorporate in my slides today. Okay, so, but before I do that, um, first I wanted to just give a big thank you to all of you, especially the high school teachers uh, in the audience, um, because, uh, so I work at Cal Poly, we're primarily undergraduate institution. Um, as, a, as a faculty member there, I'm really interested in learning why physics majors decide to major in physics. And so when I ask students this, a um, very common response that I get is that I had an amazing physics teacher in high school who, um, who just really got me interested in physics and or encouraged me to pursue physics you know, uh, in college or even as a, as a career. So I just wanted to pause to acknowledge the critical role that you all play uh, in um, you know, helping make sure that physics as a discipline stays healthy. Um, and so I just wanted to again say thank you for that. Okay, so uh, what do physicists do? So I think we all have probably some idea. I mean, if you didn't have any idea of what a physicist does, in the, internet, in the age of the internet, you know, the first thing you might do is go to Google, you type in physicist, you hit enter, and the first thing you get is this definition, which says that a physicist is an expert in or student of physics, which I don't know about you, but that's pretty unhelpful, I think, and not very illuminating as to what a physicist does. So you say, okay, maybe I'll go one step further and I'll click on the little image uh, button under, you know, the Google. And then you get uh, pictures of physicists. And uh, of course we have, you know, uh, the commons, uh, Einstein, you know, P Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, maybe some less commonly known physicists like Freeman Dyson, uh, you know, uh, Richard Feynman. Um, and you get lots of these images of people standing in front of blackboards with very obscure and complicated looking mathematics, uh, which of course is what some physicists do, but I think it's a pretty narrow view of, of what uh, physicists do uh, in general. So may, maybe again, not the most illuminating. Of course, you, if you really wanna understand, you have to dig deeper. Luckily, there's lots of data out there um, that helps us understand what physicists do. And uh, the American Institute of uh, Physics, ha AIP, has been publishing for, collecting and publishing data for, for many years now. So there's a, a huge amount of, a few, huge wealth of information uh, that's all available freely on the web. Let's see if I can work my, uh, if you go to AIP.org and their Statistical Research Center. Uh, so we'll just look a little bit at some of this data in the next few slides. So what are, what are folks doing when they graduate, say with a bachelor's degree in physics? Um, so first thing you'll notice is that only a relatively small fraction of them are unemployed, so this is a good thing. It's not a bad idea to major in physics because uh, upwards of 95% of folks after they finish their bachelor's degree are either employed or they're continuing their education on the way to employment. So about, um, 
let's see, oops, back up the slide. Uh, so about half of uh, physics graduates with bachelor's degrees go on to uh, do graduate study. Uh, and then interestingly, uh, uh, about half go straight into the workforce. And so those uh, just uh, going and getting a job when they finish their, their graduate degree. And I should mention there's something around roughly 9,000 physics bachelor's degrees awarded annually in the United States. Um, so what are folks doing who are going straight into the workforce? If you break this down by uh, different employment sectors, uh, overwhelmingly the, the majority of them are finding work in the private sector, something like 60% of this 46%. Uh, maybe 20% roughly are, are going into college and universities, 6% uh, high school, including uh, high school teachers, a similar percentage in um, civilian government or national labs, a small percentage going to active military, and then there's also just a, a bunch of other jobs that don't fit neatly into one of these categories. Okay, so private sector, working for a company, working in industry, these are uh, the areas that um, most folks are going into when they, if they're going into the workforce straight from a bachelor's. If you break that down further, as far as the, the private sector, what are the fields of employment for new physics bachelors? Um, overwhelmingly, the biggest slice of the pie is uh, in engineering. Uh, and then second, we have an uh, area of like computer software, uh, you know, computer programming, things like that. Uh, there's a, a significant number of various other STEM disciplines. Uh, there's also a similar percentage uh, that are going into non-STEM disciplines, but they're regularly solving some technical problems, you know, basically using their problem-solving skills that they developed as a as a, as a physics major, and then a small percentage are in non-STEM areas where they rarely or, uh, or never solve technical problems. So a um, few things to note. Most uh, of these graduates are working in STEM jobs in the private sector, uh, but that these physicists often have a job title that is not, does not have the word physicist in it. Okay, so that's important to recognize. So what are those job titles? So if we look at, you know, as, as reflected in the previous slide, engineering was the biggest piece of the pie, right? Um, so there's a, a, a large number of different uh, job titles which have engineer in the, in the title. Uh, systems engineer, electrical engineer, design engineer, um, product engineer. Um, so we have lots of different uh, optical engineer, lots of different engineering positions. Uh, for computer hardware software, you have programming, uh, data analysts, systems analysts. Of course, if you want to really understand, we don't have time to talk about what each one of these particular positions do. You, you know, have to do some research and understand what each of the job uh, titles do. And for students, uh, one thing that they can do is actually do inf informational interviews with folks who work in these positions and ask questions uh, and learn more about uh, what somebody would do in a particular, uh, a particular job. Um, so another area is business and finance. So Physics, people with physics training are very comfortable working and developing models, working with and developing models. And uh, so they often ha have good success working in business and finance. Um, and so, and then of course, there's the areas of education and then um, some research and technical jobs as well. I guess I could use mine. Okay, so you may, you may be wondering, well, what about the folks that do go on to graduate school? Uh, school, continuing their education, getting master's or a PhD, what do they do? Um, so this is just a slide that highlights some of the um, areas that folks with PhDs in physics end up, where they end up. Uh, so this is from 2015-2016 class, uh, one year after their PhD. And um, there was, at this, and this time there was maybe a little less than 2,000 uh, PhDs granted in the United States, something like 13% left uh, the U.S., maybe going back to home country, uh, 1,600 remain in the U.S. And then of those, um, about half go into initially into academic sector. So this is in postdoctoral research positions or other temporary positions in academics. Um, and uh, however, of the permanently of the potentially permanent positions, 73% of those potentially permanent positions were, uh, were in the private sector, okay, so working in industry or working for companies. Um, and it's important to note that these, you know, academic positions like postdoctoral research positions are often temporary two to three year positions. 
and so they're not permanent positions. And so if you look longitudinally down the road, um, 10 to 14, maybe 15 plus years after somebody graduates with a PhD, uh, there's this fractions of uh, folks that are in uh, private sector or business or industry relative to uh, education is, is slowly shifting, again, because of these, these postdoctoral positions are usually temporary. So uh, at the end of the day, again, most uh, folks are ending up in, 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 in industry. And uh, just to highlight that industry has been the largest employment base for physics PhDs for, uh, for a number of years. Okay, so that's just giving some data, some big picture overview of, um, so I have about five minutes left, is that? Ten, ten, oh yeah, I got started late, okay. Uh, so uh, that gives you some big picture uh, statistics. Um, it's nice to also look at, uh, you know, concrete examples of successful physicists profiles. And uh, if you go to the American Physical Society's website, they have a nice page which has a number of different uh, physicist profiles. Uh, you can actually select from different um, areas, academic and research universities, uh, K through 12, for your college teaching, private sector, government, and national lab. And if you click on these links, it then separates them out by bachelor's degree, master's degree, and uh, PhD. So you can see sort of what people end up doing uh, and examples in these areas. Uh, so I'm just gonna focus on the private sector just in the interest of time and also because as you saw in the previous slides, those are the most common uh, employers of physics uh, graduates. Uh, so first one here is Zara. So Zara, um, she's actually a lot like me in some ways because she didn't start out majoring in physics. She started out in a different area and then, and then switched her major to physics. Uh, so I can relate to that. Um, and then she um, eventually, uh, after she graduated, she went on to work at NIST for a little while, got a taste of research, uh, but at the same time discovered that she really likes programming and working with uh, doing things in computer science. And then so she uh, went on to work for Google, uh, basically debugging and fixing issues with the search engine uh, before they become visible to users. Um, and she says, I think physics was an awesome degree because it basically teaches you a way of problem solving that is applicable uh, to so many different fields. Um, next we have December, uh, who also uh, has a bachelor's in physics, uh, and she uh, worked at a biotech company straight out of college, and now she's a, a project manager working on a device to treat brain aneurysms and strokes. And by the way, you can click on these links and you can, there's a whole, a whole bunch more information about each of these individuals and sort of where, what, what, what their path was and where they, um, uh, are now. Uh, next we have uh, Paul. Paul has a master's in physics um, and so uh, he started out as engineering and then uh, switched to physics due to the Broderick scope. Actually if you look at Zara's profile she was also doing engineering but just wasn't really getting the the deep understanding that she wanted from that training that she really desired and so she sw switched her major to physics. Um, and so Paul is currently uh, a director of product, product development at a company that specializes in, in thin film technology. And then just as one more example here, we have Niha who uh, has a PhD in physics and she is a process engineer uh, working at Intel. So Intel hires lots of physics PhDs as well and chemistry and other, other disciplines, it's true. Um, okay, so I did want to say uh, a few things about uh, these questions, who can do physics and who does physics. Um, so as educators, you know, we tend to focus a lot on, you know, helping our students understand content and understand physics. But I think we also have an important role to help our students sort of figure out what they want to do and discover who they want to be. Um, and so, you know, this uh, understanding, helping our students understand uh, what physicists do and, and what kind of careers they have can actually also play a very important role in helping some of the very serious deficiencies that physics has as far as representation. Um, and so as far as who can do physics, I mean, if you're like me, you, you believe that if you have a really strong interest and you're willing to work hard, you can, do, you can be successful and do physics. Um, but that, the answer to uh, who does physics is not the same thing as who can do physics. 
Um, and so just to, to give a few examples of this, um, if you look at the number of bachelor's degrees, the percentage of physics bachelor's degrees, for example, earned by women in recent years is still really, uh, uh, really very low. And so this is a big problem that we, that we need to address. Um, and uh, there have been uh, studies that have shown that most, physics, uh, most female physics majors and physicists uh, reported becoming interested in physics as a potential career uh, when they were in high school. And so there's really an opportunity, I think, at that level to uh, help. And again, uh, helping students understand what a physicist does and what kind of careers are available to physics majors is an important role of that, uh, important part of that. And there's actually a program, if you're not familiar, uh, this Step Up is an APS um, program, and you can learn more about this program as well. Um, there was also a recent report uh, from the American Institute of Physics called the Team Up Report, The Time Is Now, uh, Systemic Changes to Increase African Americans with Bachelor's Degrees in Physics and Astronomy. Um, so the percentages of physics degrees earned by African Americans is also in this country very, very low and uh, has not changed much in uh, many number of years. And so uh, if you're interested, I strongly encourage everyone to read the report or at least the executive summary because there's lots of useful information. This is more focused at the college level, but um, there's a lot of useful um, insights into why is it that uh, we haven't made a lot of progress in this area and also things that we can do to try to rectify this. And I would say that also just to point out that physics, uh, you know, STEM as a whole is doing much better than physics. So this is not something we should be proud of. Um, Okay, so I'd like to close with just a few resources uh, where you might learn more if you're interested to learn more. Uh, so every year for the last several years, the American Physical Society and, and co a collaboration with Physics World has published this careers guide. And so the new one is out for this year. Uh, you can actually request a hard copy of this booklet as well if you'd like to have one in your classroom, for example. Uh, it gives the breadth of opportunities for physics graduates. Uh, advice from professionals, lists of companies that are hiring physicists. So this is a really, uh, the, 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 pro, the, the profiles they have in these of different physicists are relatively short two-page articles that are great for uh, having students read. Um, I, we have a course at Cal Poly, which is an introduction to physics research, but also it's a career exploration opportunity. And I, I have students read some of the, the, the short articles from this um, careers guide. Uh, the Society of Physics Students has this career, uh, SPS Careers Toolbox, has lists of common job titles, um, and a lot of resources more for sort of undergraduates at, the, at that level when they're starting to think about uh, looking for jobs. But it's never too early to start uh, exploring some of these resources and thinking about how to write a resume. And uh, finally, just in general, the APS Careers website uh, is a great resource that, again, has uh, those all those many physicist profiles and common career paths. It's really useful. And then finally, um, let's see if it goes forward. Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in maybe doing something in your classroom, uh, there's actually an off-the-shelf uh, lesson plan that you can uh, uh, just go to this website. This is part of the Step Up program that I mentioned earlier, uh, where students can uh, explore what different careers in physics look like. Um, and so uh, just to give you a really quick taste of what that lesson plan looks like, there's a series of tasks that students are asked to do. Uh, the first one being to brainstorm just uh, without any, with only their prior knowledge, uh, careers that, uh, that one can have with a physics degree. So what do they think you can do with a physics degree? And then to organize these careers into different um, categories um, due to, from their characteristics. Uh, second, they complete a brief survey to determine areas of interest for their future careers. So this is kind of like interest assessment, you know, similar to like a skills assessment that you might do. And then using the data from their survey that they complete in a matrix, they are matched to relevant physicist profiles, real people uh, who are physicists working uh, in their careers uh, to learn more about those, those folks and to discuss uh, their, their profiles and, and what these people are doing in their, in their work. 
uh, and then, whoa, whoa discuss the, the, the new careers in physics that they learned about and reflect on their perceptions of careers in physics and how they may have changed. Um, and then, very important, they then complete a personal career profile in which they envision themselves as a physicist. So basically trying to imagine what would it be like if I was to pursue this as a career. And then this can also be before the previous step or after, but the students discuss data prevented by, presented by their teachers on, on careers and salaries of, physici of physicists, because of course this is an important thing to consider as well. So that's basically what I wanted to cover. Um, so just to summarize, the careers that are accessible to physics graduates are, um, are quite broad, and most physics graduates uh, at all levels, from bachelor's, master's, PhDs, uh, majority of them work, end up working in the private sector, applying their, um, their physics knowledge and training in intellectually stimulating and very rewarding jobs. And high school is a critical time to inspire the next generation of physicists. I did want to acknowledge Crystal Bailey and Midhat Farouk in the APS Careers Program. Uh, for all the resources they've provided. And uh, I think we have a little time for questions, comments, discussion. I just put these questions up there just as possible prompts uh, for that discussion, just also because I'd love to learn your thoughts about these things. Uh, what do you do in your classroom to help students understand what it's like to be a physicist or to do physics? Uh, do you have any success stories of past students who have gone on to study physics in college or pursue a physics career? Or what challenges have you encountered related to any of the topics that we've discussed? So, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Uh, I, I always found with my students that um, physics sort of suffer, suffers from an image problem, uh, at least undergrad. It, the students feel like they know what a biologist does. They feel like they know what a chemist does, um, particularly in Minnesota where we have a lot of uh, biological and chemical companies, 3M and, and Medtronic and, and things like that, Boston Scientific. Um, but they're sort of stumped when it comes to physics. And um, so these are great resources to be able to pass on, I think. Yeah, I think, the, I think the community has, over the years, has recognized that. I mean, I know when I was a student and I was asked that question, what are you going to do with a physics degree, I really couldn't answer it because I hadn't been given any resources to, you know, I knew I liked to do physics and that was all that really mattered at the time. And to some, sense, that's, some extent that is okay, I think, but at the same time, you do have to start thinking about where you're gonna go and what you're gonna do. And, and it's also, uh, I think the image problem as far as recruiting people into the field too is, is, is an issue. So yeah, so hopefully we can all work together to try to change that. Um, I'm a chemist. I'm a chemistry teacher, so I have a different perspective on this. So I know in chemistry, it's really difficult specifically to find chemistry teachers. I know physics is probably worse, right? I mean, and so, um, but in general, finding physicists to do the jobs, what is the gap between how many physics majors were churning out and the jobs filled? What, how severe is that gap? I don't see the gap as being a problem. If you think back to the earlier slide, the, the, num the un unemployment rate for, for physics majors is low. And, and just anecdotally, in my experience uh, as you know, university, and working in a university, the students that I know that graduate and don't find work right away, I don't think it's because there's an inherent difficulty in, a, in the employability of, of a physics. Oh, it started like, oh, oh, I see what you're, you're asking a different question. I think we are, there's lots of jobs that are willing, companies like, like physicists, like physics majors. Um, the, the problem solving and critical thinking skills that they develop in their training tends to be highly desirable. I don't have a, a good answer, I don't think, for the numbers, but my feeling is that, yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. So um, one thing that I had, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had a microphone as well. Go ahead. So I've actually done uh, the careers in physics, uh, the one that you showed on uh -huh. APS. So I've done that in my classroom a couple of times to, now, uh, to date, and it's been really successful. And surprisingly, it's been you know, more successful with my regular physics students than AP physics students. The AP physics students, uh, those AP kids usually, they already know they want a career in STEM and they know what they want to do, kind of. 
but it was very nice to see uh, when I did that lesson with my regular physics class and some of them were like, oh, I like physics, but I really like to write. And they got matched up with someone who's had a you know degree in physics and now they're doing technical writing for some, somebody. And mm -hmm. like some of them were really, they're they really happy to know that they could pursue what they really wanted even after they, or, because they like physics and they could take physics in college. So that was really nice. And then I've had a few students who've gone off to college to study physics and I actually had one student come in uh, just yesterday and he's doing astrophysics at UCLA. And uh, he came back and he talked to the class and he's uh, he talked about how he just reached out to professors and now he's working with the professor and they're trying to uh, categorize uh, signals to figure out, you know, are, are these from Earth, are these from space, like, is there life outside? And I think that was very interesting for the students to listen to. So, That's awesome to yeah. hear. One thing, kind of echoing what everybody else has already said, that, that lesson on APS is fantastic. They, it's, it's very well thought out. It's got a lot of resources. There's also a women in STEM lesson that kind of goes hand in hand with it that's part of the Step Up program that if you're curious about that, they, they kind of talk about some of the inequities that, are, that exist in the field of physics, both at the undergraduate level and in the career field and even to like graduate school and, and postdoc work. So if you're interested in that, definitely look into it. It's, it's a very valuable resource. And the folks that have implemented it, because I've not actually done it, but was it pretty, it, it seems like it would be pretty straightforward to implement is, in your it's, class. It's basically, I mean, you can print it off and run it as a lesson yeah. that same day. Yeah. So. We have a question here. Thank you for this very nice overview on physics education. Just wanted to share that I, I, I teach math now, and many years ago I was teaching physics. And some of my strongest students in the math classroom uh, actually went, I didn't think they would go into physics but they majored in physics and that was really great. And one of the students who st struggled considerably in my physics classroom years ago, I heard a few years ago that he actually finished a phys PhD in physics, in, in quantum, uh, quantum physics, somewhere in California. Uh, but I just wanted to know, in one of the slides, I think in where you showed how uh, the majors went, I think from 2015 onwards, there was a sharp spike in earth sciences. Um, oh. Just curious, why that earth sciences spike? I don't, I don't know, and I don't know if anybody else knows, but I think you're talking about uh, environmental, environmental, environmental studies and environmental, environmental awareness. Yeah, yeah, this one. I'm sorry, well, I didn't hear the answer. It was the environmental sciences, the earth sciences, took a massive increase with the introduction of global warming, climate change. Okay, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a question. So um, I know APS offers scholarship, college scholarships. Do you have any additional data about how tough is it for a student to obtain? A scholarship from APS, how many they give out, what their dollar amounts are? Um, I don't have any information off the top of my head about that, but I could look into it and get back to you for sure. I don't, uh, yeah. Okay, I think in, in the classroom, I, I always focus on, the, you're learning how to solve problems. You know, you're learning how to logically think out how you're gonna show what you know. And I think that is, goes across any discipline, whether you're in business or anything else. Here's the problem. How do we, how do we figure out a solution? How do we show that we know what we're talking about? Yes. And then, and I tell them the better you are at that, the better you're gonna be compensated when you get a job, pretty much, okay? I've had, gosh, I've got a student, I think he's a grad student in quantum computing somewhere now, and some of them are, you know. And I, I think a path that people don't realize you have a bachelor's degree in computers, uh, tons of law firms will pay you to go to law school and work for them in terms of intellectual property. I have a friend of mine who's got his PhD in chemistry who's a lawyer. Yep. Worked for a company made DNA sequencing machines. He goes, I need you in intellectual property. He goes, I'm not a lawyer. He goes, I need a chemist. Um, and so biochem, physics, mm -hmm. engineering, that kind of stuff. I try to tell them, but we don't know enough. That helps the information. It's wide open. You can do anything you want to do. It's very, it's very broad, which is also, if you look at the salaries, the salaries are also broad, too, yeah. for physicists because there's a wide 
That's, that's the same question they ask math teachers. What can I do with a math degree? Anything you want. Yeah. I mean, even more wide ranging than physics. I wanted to just follow. I wanted to follow up on the comment about the, the student who struggled that did really well. I actually experienced this also with this one of our physics majors who was in my intro class and and struggled, but was very persistent. Finished her degree, and she's now uh, went on to Caltech for graduate school. And so, I think reminding students that their past performance is not always a predictor of their future success and uh, and the importance of sort of productive failure and, and those ideas is really important for us as educators so um, I wanted to say that looking at this diagram one thing it, it is important is that we realize that who can do physics physics is anybody so a lot of times it's not so much looking at the AP students but the general ed students you do not have an indication on who has the knowledge what will come out in the future. That's right. So having an open perspective of showing that you can solve problems and is relative. And the reason why the um, the earth science and everything, because what is big being talked about right mm -hmm. now, physicists are not, we're not telling our story. We're not showing that it's important to understand the fundamentals laws so that we can solve problems. So therefore, everyone else who's telling stories they're getting the attention, and everyone knows the squeaky wheel does get the oil, <laughs> as they say. And so, I right. agree. So I, I just want to add that uh, Matt will be around throughout yeah, the, I'll be around. the program. So yeah. if you have further questions or comments, feel free to engage Matt later. But maybe last question. Yeah, please. Oh, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for your presentation. As someone who teaches all females. Um, I think one, there's two things that always resonate with me from conversations I've had with them. First of all, they don't like to be victimized mm -hmm. and they don't like to be constantly reminded about the gap in STEM. Um, and that's probably a broader conversation. Mm -hmm. But the one thing in terms of my students, we have a small graduating class of about 60 students and probably three or four of them will opt to major in physics, but they often major in physics combined with something else. And if you're going to address girls in physics, you have to think about those connections that they make with other disciplines. So we'll have a student that will major in physics and business as a double major, but will not necessarily major just in physics because they're always looking for that connection between a variety of different disciplines. So they tend to pave their own pathway in their own journey when it comes to it without just saying, I'm going to be a physics major. So it's something that we consider when we're working with our students in terms of their college uh, goals. It's like, how are you thinking about how your majors are all interconnected? And that's what females specifically are looking for in our school when they're thinking about their college majors. So, but again, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, it's good to consider also for sort of advising uh, students at the college level as well. Let's give another round of applause. Thank you.